Hi guys, is my voice audible? Okay. okay, so we'll start at two. Let's wait for other people to join. Then we'll begin. So by that time, other people join. Do you guys have anything to ask me about drones? You can ask. At least we can do that before others join.
Hello, everyone. So just let me know if you can scre see my screen and if the voice is clear. Okay, so we'll start the session. This will be the last session of the three parts. And so we'll do a quick revision from the begin, from the first session to now. Okay, so in the very first session, we learned about multi rotors. So what a multi rotor is, it has four fans. That is why it's called as a multi rotor. Then we learned about the different types of drones. Like we saw the hobby drone, we saw photography drones. Then we saw heavy duty, we saw the ornithopter, which looks like a bird. We also saw the military ones. And then we went into the physics of how a multi rotor flies. And we learned that the multi rotor flies by spinning action of the propellers. The propeller spin by creating a pressure difference between the air above the propeller and below the propeller, which causes the drone to rise because the high pressured air pushes it up. And we learned that there are two principles that is the Bernoulli's theorem, which states that uh, any fluid moves from a low pressure area to a high pressure area. In this case, it is air that moves from low pressure to high pressure. Then the third Newton's third law of motion also comes into picture that any any action has an equal and opposite reaction. The drone pushes the air down and it experiences a opposite force that pushes the drone up. Next, we started with the different parts of the drone. And we learned that whenever you are building a drone, you start with a uh, the frame or the propeller. So by keeping the purpose of the drone build in mind, you select the frame first. You either buy a frame directly or you can also like select. Uh, you can also build your own frame. Then we saw the different materials that you can build the frame with. Like we can, we saw that you can build a frame with wood if you want. You can also use aluminum. And the best material to use for a frame is carbon fiber. Then we saw the propellers. Propellers are the spinning blades. We learned that propellers are designed to spin in a particular direction because two opposite motors of the drone spin in the same direction while the other two spin in opposite. If one pair spins in clockwise, the other pair spins counterclockwise. So just like that, the propellers are designed to spin in either clockwise or counterclockwise direction. Then we looked into the motors. We saw how a motor works with by the action of electromagnets and permanent magnets. So inside here, these are the permanent magnets and outside. So these outside silver ones are the permanent magnets and the inside coils are the electromagnets. And using these, the action of turning on and off of the electromagnets, thus motor spins. And we learned that the motors that are used in the drone are called as brushless DC motors and they have three wires. So unlike a normal motor having two wires, which directly go to the battery, these motors have three wires and these three wires go to the electronic speed controller that is here. So electronic speed controller has three terminals where the motor wires are to be connected. And then through the electronic speed controller, the battery is connected. So these red and black wires go to the battery. We also saw that when you buy a motor, you get something called as a motor spec sheet with the motor. And on that motor spec sheet, 
you find the compatible e esc like how much current it draws and depending on the maximum current you select the esc you can also find out the battery voltage from the motor spec sheet from there you get an idea of also the voltage that the esc will support we will we also saw that when building a multi rotor the motors should produce at least twice the thrust then the weight of the drone itself which is called as the thrust to weight ratio that is thrust total thrust generated by the motors divided by the estimated weight of the drone in case of a normal like if you are building a drone to simply fly it should be at least two the thrust to weight ratio should be two having it go up to four is even better if you are building a racing drone then you need a thrust to weight ratio of like eight ten or even more than that then comes the the lithium polymer battery which is responsible for supplying the large amount of current that the drone requires we learned the formula for calculating the required battery first you start by calculating the power that the drone needs we do that by taking the maximum current from the motor spec sheet that the motor draws multiplying it by 4 because in case of the quadcopter we have four motors and in case of a hexacopter if you are building a, a, a drone with six motors then in that case you will have to multiply it by six and if you are using eight motors in that case you will be multiplying it by eight but in our case since we are building a quadcopter you will be multiplying the maximum current drawn by one motors into four that will give you the total required current by the drone then depending on the total requirement you select a battery that can give that much current when selecting a battery you look at the battery capacity you also look at the c rating and multiply them both so after multiplying the value you get should be more than what you got previously that is by multiplying the motors and the maximum current so battery should be able to supply at least more than what the drone will need next we learned about the flight controller we learned that the flight controller has various sensors it, it acts as the brain of the multi rotor that it receives uh, various inputs from the pilot and then it translates that input into the motions that you see the drone do for example moving forward backward even flipping the drone the flight controller contains many sensors like gyroscope accelerometer and then there is barometer gps compass for obstacle avoidance you can add a ultrasonic sensor you can add a 360 degree lidar for 360 degree in to avoid obstacles in all directions we also saw uh, what the various sensors do like gyroscope detects the angular change in velocity accelerometer detects the force of gravity barometer detects the height compass detects the geographical north and gps gives you the location and today we'll start with the uh, transmitter and receiver so transmitter and receiver this is short for tx and rx so these are short for transmitter and receiver a transmitter also called as a ground station in the picture you can see a remote this is a device that will be on the ground it is also called as a ground station so ground station is a device which is on the ground which communicates with the receiver on the drone the pilot will be on the ground giving the various commands and the ground station will be transmitting th those commands to the receiver on the drone the receiver the re receives the commands and forwards the commands to the flight controller this is how this system works the ground station can either be a remote controller or it can be your laptop with a radio frequency module 
So this this module is called as a telemetry module. I'll type it out. When you connect this module to your laptop, your laptop can transmit commands to the drone and the drone should also have a receiving telemetry module on on its system so that the commands that the laptop is sending should be correctly interpreted by the drone. Now just let me know if you can see my video. I'll be showing you the remote and various stuff. Okay. So this here, as you can see, is a transmitter. In simple words, it's called a remote or a radio. This type of remote, this here is a bit expensive remote. But when you buy a remote, it is a one time cost. Like, uh, for example, you buy this remote, you can use it with any drones that you build in the future. So for every drone that you build, you don't need to buy a separate remote. What you do is I'll turn on and show you if it's possible to see on the camera. So if you guys can see, there's a list there. So in that list, you will see that there are different names. Those are actually the drones. And on this remote, I can actually connect up to 60 drones. So this 60 drones, I can connect one at a time, not at the same time. So whenever I'm flying, let's see the first one, I just go to this menu and select that first one. Then the remote will be communicating with that drone. If I'm flying the second drone, I just switch to the second drone. Then it closes the communication with the first one and switches to the second one. So just like this, there are other remotes that are cheaper. You will find them around 4,000 rupees range. They'll let you connect 20 drones. So this one is a bit expensive one. So any questions about the remote and all? Like on the group, I was talking about how to fly a simulator, you should prefer to use a remote. So this is the type of remote that you should use on the PC if you're using a simulator. Uh, this allows you to connect a uh, USB wire at the back here, as you can see, and this goes to the laptop. And then on the simulator, you can actually fly with these controls. So this gives you a feel of actually flying the drone. So when you go out and fly for the first time, you actually have a feel for your remote. So there's a question in the chat about how much these controllers cost. So this one here, you'll get it around like 10,000 rupees range. And there's a cheaper one that you get around 4,000 uh, because this is expensive. It, as you can see, it has many features here. Like it has buttons, which we'll be talking about like what it is, how it works. Then there are other remotes that are cheaper, but they give you lesser functionality. Like you will have a lesser number of switches on them and uh, like I said, this one has capacity to connect to 60 drones. A cheaper one will have like 20 drones capacity like that. There are also like you get in 2000 rupees or uh, maybe even cheaper, but that will only connect to one drone and a very limited range you will get. With this, you get a range of up to one kilometer. Now let's talk about the controls. So in the first section, we learned about the various movements that the drone can do. That is throttle, pitch, yaw, and roll. So this one here, which is moving smoothly, as you can see, if I push it up, it takes that, it stays on that particular point. This is the throttle. Throttle basically means the speed of the motors. If I push it up, the motors will spin faster. On the same point, on the same control, I have a different command that is this way. So this is called as yaw. Yaw means that the drone will just rotate on its axis. So if the drone is flying flat, 
when I give it your, it will just rotate in either left or right. On the second hand here, I have the pitch command and the roll command. When I give it a pitch command, the drone will rotate in the front. So this where the camera is, is the front. If I give a pitch command in the front, it will rotate either forward. If I give a back command, it will rotate backward. If you give a roll command, the drone will tilt towards the left or right. So this is roll. So these are the four minimum controls that you need in a remote or a radio to help you control the drone. Along with these four, you also need some switches. So switches, the switch controls help in changing like different flight modes that a drone has. We'll be talking about flight modes and you can also like program these extra switches that are here to like for starting the drone or maybe you have a camera on them on the drone and you can trigger that camera using this switch. If it's a big drone, you can trigger a sprayer with the switch. And like there are many additional functions that you can program the switch to do on the drone. Now this particular drone is uh, this particular remote is called as a 60 channel remote. So 16 channel A channel basically means the num number of one single command that I can send. Since this one is a 16 channel, I can send up to 16 different commands to the drone. So here, when I said this is a throttle, this is actually one command. Then this is a second one. Pitch is third, roll is fourth. So in total, these are four. To transmit these four controls, I will need four channels on the remote. And similarly, to transmit the action of each of these switches, I will need one extra channel per switch. So that's why this is a 16 channel. So it can transmit up to 16 different commands to the drone. A cheaper remote, you might get 10 channels, eight channels or six. Like minimum, you should buy a six channel, I think, because you will need one, one switch you will need for triggering the drone that is start and stop. And you'll need another switch for triggering the different flight control modes. Now there are, you can also get like more than 16 channel remote. It's possible. Now let's talk about the different flight modes that are there in a drone. Last time during when explaining about the sensors, I also spoke about the flight controllers. But before we move on to flight controllers, if you guys have any flight modes, sorry, if you guys have any uh, questions, you can ask about the remote and all. Otherwise, I will proceed with the flight modes. Yeah, so um, there's a question that when will the drone build be shown? So today I'll be showing you the connection diagram and all. So I won't be actually showing you the actual drone build, but I'll show you the connections using a circuit diagram. Okay, so if there are no more questions, we'll move on to flight modes. The very first flight mode that I said in the previous session that you can fly a drone with using just the gyroscope. So if you are using just the gyroscope, it's called as acrobatic mode or short for acro. I'll type it in the chat. A C R O. In this case, the drone does whatever the pilot commands. So if you like tell the drone to tilt, it'll tilt, but it won't do anything else like stabilizing itself. Like you see, like the drone I showed you in the first session that it used to stay flat. So in acro mode, it won't be able to do that unless the pilot tells it to stay flat. That is the pilot should give a proper command that is either pitch or roll to make it flat. This is a fully manual uh, control flight mode, which is very difficult to learn. 
So we need quite a lot of time to actually learn to fly in acro mode. And it is used usually in racing and also to record some cinematic flight footage. Like if you are chasing a fast object like a car, in that scenario, you'll be using a, the acro flight mode. Next is the stabilized flight mode. In this case, along with the gyroscope, the drone will also use the accelerometer. In, and here, if you like, don't give any controls to the drone, it will always stay flat. In acro mode, this is not possible. In acro mode, if for example, the drone is tilted, the pilot has to give the command to make the drone flat. Otherwise, the drone will stay tilted. But in acro mode, if the pilot gives no command and the drone is tilted, in sorry, in stabilized mode, if the drone is tilted and the pilot doesn't give any command, the drone will automatically make itself flat because it has the accelerometer and it detects the force of gravity. So if the gravity is down, it will always be down. So the drone will level itself out at the direction of gravity. But this is the only thing that it will do. If there is any wind and all, the drone will all go away with the breeze. There will be changes in height because there is no height sensor in stabilized mode. If there is a breeze, it will like come up and down. It might go left or right with the breeze. To prevent that from happening, we add more sensors. The next flight mode. Okay, I'll type the stabilized flight mode first. After acro, we saw stabilized. Next is the altitude hold. In altitude hold mode, along with the previous two sensors, the flight controller will make use of the barometer as well. And as the name suggests, altitude hold. It means that it will hold the height. In the previous flight mode, stabilized mode, the drone will either move up or down depending on the how the breeze behaves. But in altitude hold mode, the drone will stay at that particular height at which the pilot told it to. It may move around like left or right, but it will always keep the height stable. Next is the position hold mode. In position hold mode, the drone will have a GPS and compass. And using the GPS and compass, the drone will lock onto its position. So even if the pilot doesn't give any commands to move around, the drone will stay. Even if there is breeze, it will stay at that particular point because now the flight controller knows the geographical locations using the GPS. And it also knows the direction in which the drone is facing using the compass. Therefore, even if any breeze comes, the drone, the flight controller will automatically calculate the amount of like backward force it should give to make itself come back to the initial position. And the last flight mode that we are talking about is the auto. In auto mode, it makes use of all the sensors that are in, uh, in the position hold that is starting from gyroscope, accelerometer, barometer, GPS, compass, and using all of these, the pilot only has to give the drone a particular path to follow, like a zigzag pattern going forward, taking a turn, coming back. So a zigzag pattern that the drone should follow. But this is the only thing that the pilot will, should give to the flight controller. Once the flight controller receives the, the path, he just has to start the drone and the drone will fly itself. So it will automatically follow the given path if there are any obstacles and the drone has a maybe 360 degree LIDAR, it will avoid the obstacles and complete the mission and it will also land on itself. You can also, after completing the mission, you can also call the drone back. So it will automatically come to the initial point and land right in front of the pilot. This is the flight mode that we use in the spraying drones as well. So in a field, we mark a zigzag pattern, we fill the drone tank and we start the drone in auto mode. So the drone follows the path while spraying continuously.
and once the liquid is over we bring the drone back we call it back it comes back on its own we fill the tank again and start the next mission and today we'll be showing you uh, looking at how to uh, plan a mission also next we'll talk about the telemetry module like i said in the previous uh, just a few minutes ago that along with the remote you can also use your laptop as a ground station but you can't directly use it you need something called as a telemetry module using that telemetry module the laptop will be able to communicate with the drone the drone should also have a receiving telemetry module on it so whatever the laptop transmits the drone will receive okay any questions till now about the different flight modes the remote and telemetry system Any questions or should I move on? Okay. I'll type the spelling of telemetry in the chat. You can also use it with a, a tablet. Okay, now let's talk about the FPV system. In the first sec session, we learned about the FPV system, that is the first person view. In a FPV system, there are three things. On the drone, you have a camera which captures the image. Then there is a video transmitter. So let's see if you guys can see it. Here, this chip is called as a video transmitter. And then you have the antenna. So this black antenna here is the antenna used for video transmission. The camera captures the image, sends it to the video transmitter. The video transmitter converts the image into radio frequency. And then it is transmitted over the antenna. Then on the ground, the pilot has a similar system. The pilot also has an antenna. The pilot has a receiving Video, trans video receiver and then the video receiver is connected to a display or a screen. Whatever the drone transmits, these antennas pick that signal, send it to the video receiver. Video receiver converts that radio frequency back to the image and then it is displayed on the screen. On the ground, the pilot can either use a screen or the pilot can use a FPV goggle. So I have one goggle here. So these are some more antennas that you can see. They have specific purposes. So this is a directional antenna which focuses in only one direction that is the front. So it won't be capturing the signal from the back. It will only be capturing from the front. While this one here is a omnidirectional. That is it is a, uh, it gives range in all directions. While this one gives a shorter range, but it captures signal from all directions. This one here will give a longer range, but in one particular direction. So on the ground, the pilot can use something called as a FPV goggle. So this is a similar to a VR goggle, which the pilot wears on their eyes. And there's a screen inside the goggle. Here you can see that this is the screen. And this is where the video transmitted from the drone is displayed. 
you can either choose to apply using a screen or you can buy a goggle goggle gives you a more immersive experience that is it gives you a better experience that you are actually flying in the sky than using a screen so fpv headsets can like the cost of these fpv specific to fpv headsets can start from i think the cheapest one starts from around 5000 because it has a screen and all but you can also buy something like this this is this can be connected to your phone so this one was uh, is around 1500 rupees but this has issues like it can disconnect like when you are flying you no know, this can actually disconnect from the phone and you might lose the video signal while flying that's why having a goggle is much more better but while starting you can start with this because this is a cheaper option the fpv goggles can start from 5000 this one here is a 8000 one then there are more expensive ones that are like 20000 and even higher than that are available so their difference is on the range like better the video transmission and rece reception capacity the more range you get okay let's talk about latency latency is the time difference between when the camera captures the image like here when the particular point in time when the camera captures the image and when the pilot receives that image so time difference between that is called as the latency latency should be very low in case of fpv systems because the pilot should see what the drone is saying at the same exact same time as close as possible so let's take an example let's say that the drone is traveling at a speed of five meters per second the drone is going five meters ahead every second and let's say that the image transmission latency is one second which means that every time the pilot sees an image the drone has traveled five meters if there is a tree five meters ahead of the drone by the time the pilot receives that image the drone would have already crashed into the tree therefore you should have a latency in milliseconds so these fpv systems have latencies of like 20 milliseconds 10 milliseconds they are quite fast that's why that's why you see the immediate image that the drone is seeing it's mainly because of the speed at which the drone travels the camera is connected to the vtx directly or it is connected to the flight controller first and then to the vtx so connecting the camera to the flight controller allows you to get some data on the image that you are seeing for example you can get the battery level of the drone you will directly get it on the screen so while flying you will always have an eye on the battery level you can also if you have a gps you can also get the coordinates on the screen and if you go somewhere far away and the drone crashes you can always look through the video video feed and get the gps coordinates and then look for the drone and there are other data also like range you can also find using the camera and these fpv cameras are available in both analog and digital the difference is in speed analog gives you a low quality image while the latency is very less on the other hand the digital fpv systems gives you give you a hd image like they give you a very high quality image but the latency is a little bit higher than analog and these fpv cameras are actually very usable in low light there are FPV cameras that you can uh, use at night, which almost give you a feel that it is actually day. So there are night vision FPV cameras like that. Like you actually feel when you see through the camera, you, see, you get a feel that it is actually day outside. But in reality, it is pitch black. Now, these are the components that make up a FPV system. And remember that FP, and this is an independent system. 
up, apart from the drone you can either opt to have it or you can skip the fpv system if you are using, not going to do fpv if you are just going to fly it in line of sight so like it, the drone is always going to be in front of you and that is the way you prefer to fly the drone then you don't need a fpv system only if you want to like feel uh, the flying you want to experience the flying as a fpv then only you will need that fpv module and also if you are a uh, shooting you are taking footage then also you will need a fpv system any questions about the fpv camera vt video transmitter antenna the range of the uh, video transmitter depends on the power of the video transmitter the more powerful the video transmitter is the more range you will get and just like that so other than that these two things that is the video transmission and the remote these both have two different ranges and they are not the same video transmitter will be tra uh, the video transmitter will be transmitting on its own frequency while this radio will be transmitting on a different frequency so there might be uh, scenarios wherein you will be able to control the drone but you might lose the video signal or there can be opposite scenarios wherein you will be able to see the see the camera image but the remote might not be able to communicate with the drone so these are possible scenarios so this is because they transmit on two different radio frequencies and if you are interested in like building a drone that goes very far by default this one gives a range of 1 km but if you, if you want to push even beyond that there are modules you can attach to the like this particular remote you can attach a module here at the back it's possible to remove it here so you can add a long range module here then it will increase the capacity of the remote to transmit a stronger signal you can get ranges up to 10 kilometers up to 40 kilometers you can get a range so kion is asking like how much it will cost to build a drone if you are building a drone for the first time the cost will be little higher because there will be one time cost such as the remote like i said you will be buying the remote only once not for the every single drone you build you need only one remote and for the first time you need a remote the cost of the remote is there you have the cost of the fpv goggle if you are interested again you will not be buying a fpv goggle for every drone you will only be buying it once and then using with using it with all your drones so and there are also tools if you are interested in building the drone yourself you will also need to buy the tools so i will be talking about the tools next there are various tools that you will need to build the drone like screwdriver set and all if you don't have it you have to buy it for the first time so that increases the cost of the first build so considering all of this it will probably the first build can probably cost you around somewhere around like 20 to 30000 so that is the cheaper end i told you so you can also like go higher add more sensors to the drone but that will make it more expensive also okay so any other questions if there are no questions then we'll move on to the assembly section like the requirements for drone assembly and we'll also look at the assembly diagram so are there any questions about the fpv system remote etc or shall we move on to the assembly part
please reply in the chat if there are questions or should I start with the next assembly? Okay. So we'll move on to the next part. Here, so this is the diagram that I showed you in the very first session. Here you can see the different parts. And during the ESC section, I told you that you can either opt for single ESCs that one motor will require one ESC. In this case, you will also need a power distribution board. If you are going for a stack that is a four in one ESC, you won't be needing a power distribution board because that will be included on the four in one ESC. But if you are buying the ESC separately, you need a power distribution board. The three wires from the motors go to the three pads here, as you can see on the ESC. And then through the ESC, two wires that is red and black are connected to these terminals that is plus and minus. Red wire goes to the plus, black wire goes to the minus. This is how this connection is made. Three, uh, three wires of the motors can be connected to three terminals of the ESC in any fashion. There is no particular order like the first wire should be connected to the first pad. No, there is no specific order. You can just connect any wire to any pad. Then the uh, black wire should be connected to the negative. Red wire should be connected to the positive terminal. So there's a question that about a brushless ESC. So brushless, it's actually a brushless motor, not a ESC. Brushless ESC is what you, brushless motor is what you use in a drone because they have the stator and permanent magnet mechanism. While there are some motors which have a brush mechanism inside it, they are called as brushed motors. So these ones here are called as brushless. And they have these three wires which go to the ESC. Then, uh, as you can see here in the picture, there's a white and black wire. So these wires go to the flight controller. On the flight controller, there will be a like section to connect the ESC wires. Through these two tiny wires, the flight controller will send flight the speed controls, which are then. Uh, send to the ESC and then through the ESC, it goes to the motor. This is the setup wherein you'll be using a single ESC for one motor. So for one motor, you will buy a separate ESC. You'll need a power distribution board. So you have to remember that. If you are opting for a stack, you will get a separate like a connection diagram with it. So I'll show you that image now. Okay, so he, this is a diagram that you get with the flight controller stack. In the previous section, we saw what is a stack. A stack is a flight controller and a four in one ESC, one on top of the other. So if you guys remember here, in the on my video screen you'll see i'm showing you the stack so on top is the flight controller and under that is the four in one esc and when you buy a stack you will always get a like a diagram connection diagram if you don't get the connection diagram you just have to google the model of the stack so in this case the name of the stack is mamba f4 if you just google this you will get the this image of the connection diagrams so this is the top chip. This is the flight controller chip. And you can see the various connections that are shown. And this is the ESC chip. Just now I showed you the single ESC, how to connect the motor, three wires of the motor to the single ESC. Similarly here, as you can see, there are three yellow colored pads. So this is where the three wires from the motors go. First motor will go here, second here, third year, fourth one here. This chip will act as the ESC and the power distribution board. And these red and black wires go to the battery. 
using this circuit diagram you will be able to assemble your drone so these are the only connections on the 4 in 1 esc that is the motors will be connected and the battery and you will get these you don't have to worry about because they will be already connected for it, for you in the stack so there will be a connecting cable here and it will be just plugged in into the flight controller here what you have to do is connect the camera that is shown here camera the vtx video transmitter and the receiver and if you are using a buzzer and other things uh, like a led strip you want to use then these are the connection diagrams for that in case of a fpv camera as you can see here there will normally be three wires coming out of it there will be a yellow black and red yellow wire will be for the video out so on this wire the camera will be transmitting the video while these two are for the power our end ground these three wires will be going on the flight controller here so whatever the diagram shows you where the camera is supposed to be connected you have to connect the wires just to that point so here it is showing that the yellow wire is supposed to be connected on this point while the positive and ground are connected here then these are the various types of vt axis so just like there are three wires on the camera there will also be three wires on the vtx the camera will be having a video out because it is giving out video while the video transmitter will have a video in wire because the video it will be taken in by the video transmitter and then transmitted over the antenna as you can see here there is a, a red power wire green sorry black ground wire and a video in these three wires will be connected these are just extra ones that you don't have to worry about right now we just have to look at these three that is the yellow video and the red and black ground power wires in this case the camera feed will be first sent to the flight controller and then through the flight controller the vtx will receive it therefore you will be able to get some flight data on the images like battery level and etc it's called as a osd on screen display okay, so i'll just type it in the chat OSD means on screen display whenever you are flying you will get some flight data on the image that you see on the screen so similar to that this is a receiver whenever you buy a particular remote you should also buy a receiver for it like i said a remote is a one time cost you won't don't have to buy a remote for every single drone that you build if the remote has the capacity to store a particular drone data then you just have to buy a receiver and not the remote and the remote only switches between the different receivers and this is how the receiver is connected the receiver just like the camera will have three wires so there will be power wire that is red and black and there'll be one more wire which is for sending the signals here it is called as s bus so as you see the s bus wire goes here on the flight controller while connecting this you should properly align the flight controller that you have with this diagram and then connect and just in case if you are using a, like this fr sky is the brand of the receiver so if you have if you are using this brand receiver then this is the connection if you are using a different receiver then this is the connection here like these are prob these are the long range ones like the, i said if you are adding a different module on the remote then you will be using these type that give you a longer range if you are interested in adding a buzzer then you also have provision for that so buzzer has only two wires that is red and black and they will go here if you want to attach a led strip the led strip will go here so red black and the blue one will be to control the leds 
right so there are many other things that you can attach to the flight controller like a gps so they will have their specific connections the gps and all go usually go to these points that is the tx and rx so they that stands for like transmission and reception signals from the gps will be received on the rx point and then the data will be transmitted back on the tx Okay, any questions about this? Since we can't actually show you the actual assembly here, but on our YouTube channel, we have a video uploaded, which you can actually see how the assembly is made. So we'll share the link of the assembly video on the WhatsApp group. So that way you'll be able to use the video as reference while assembling the drone. Okay, so any questions up until now about the connection wiring? and during your first build you will need some tools so these tools we have made a list of them i think i shared the list with you if you still don't have it then i'll share it again the drone building checklist will have a bunch of tools listed in them like a soldering iron a screwdriver set a allen key screwdriver set you will need a wire cutter or you will also need a tweezer a spanner etc We'll need some insulation tape as well, some extra wires, just in case the drone wires are short, we'll need some extra ones to make them longer. Okay, if there are any questions, type it in the chat. Even if there are no questions, please let me know if there are no questions. Okay, so we'll stop for five minutes now and next we'll move on to like the different uh, flight controller softwares that are available in the market. Yeah, so there's a question like why do we need a power distribution board? So uh, as the name suggests power distribution board, it is used for distributing the power. The battery that you will use will normally give a high voltage that is above 5 volts. And the flight controller and some other components, they will always require only 5 volts. If you directly connect it to the flight controller, there's a chance that the flight controller will like get burnt or something. So therefore, if you use a power distribution board, the battery will be connected to the power distribution board. And that board will be able to handle the battery voltage and through the power distribution board you will be able to give power to the flight controller because the power distribution board or pdb pdb for short will provide a 5 volt terminal that you can connect to the flight controller or if you're using some other sensors like a 360 degree lidar that also you can connect to the power distribution board so does that answer the question? The key one is asking like where I am from. I'm from Goa only. So session is given from Don Bosco College of Engineering.
and if you guys are interested we are also planning to like uh, keep a session here in the college for drone flying so just planning on how to have the session because of the covid situation and all so if you guys are interested you can like, give, uh, give give us a hint on the group so we know that you guys are actually interested and we can start planning that session kiss okay, for 5 minutes and we'll resume after some time
okay so let's start in now we'll look at like the different softwares that are available that you can put in the flight controller so because there are already existing softwares that help you program the flight controller you don't have to sit and actually code it all you have to do is just tell the flight controller which direction the motors are spinning what sensors are connected to it and rest all will be done for you okay, the very first software that i'll show you is called as ardu pilot I'll type it in the chat Okay. No, these are open source softwares and they are free. It is actually called as a firmware. So for, for by firmware, it means that it's something that goes on the chip. Okay, so this is the website it's uh, the website is ardupilot.org i'll send a link in the chat so this is one of the software that goes on a, a more advanced flight, flight controller which you can use for autonomous flying like you can plan a mission and put it on the flight controller and the drone whatever the drone is it can be a multi-rotor it can be an aeroplane it can also be a ground vehicle and it will do like automatically drive or fly on its own. There are various things that you can do. Everything is mentioned on this website. You can explore it. So one thing, uh, this is the point where you should go open the website. Once this comes on the top, you will find a button called docs. So go to that and it will open the documentation of how to set up the flight controller. And these are the like various things you can do with the flight controller. Like you can build a copter. Copter is multi-rotor or a helicopter. You can design a plane. Rover means the ground vehicle. There's a submarine. Antenna tracker is something that we won't be seeing. So we'll only be looking at copter. Antenna tracker means it will automatically move the antenna to the strongest point to receive the signal. So what you have to do is if you're interested in the multi-rotor part, you can go to the copter. If you want anything else, you go to there, rover, plane, submarine. So now we are going to copter. So here you will get all the details like introduction, what softwares you need. So this here is a screenshot of the mission planning. This software is called as mission planner. So here you will get an introduction to like different types of copters that are there. And like one by one, you move on. Go to Ardu Pilot, the hardware options. This will tell you the different flight controllers that are available. You will also go through the first time setup. Like once the drone is built, what are the steps you should do? And it will walk you also through the first flight. It will tell you what are the safety checks you should do before the first flight. It will also give you some tips and some uh, like debugging. If you find any errors, it will tell you how to go through the errors and resolve the errors. In first time setup, you will find the different ground station softwares. So here you will find that there is one called as mission planner. Then there is queue ground control. There is APM planner. Well, this is the most preferred one that is mission planner. But if you have a different system like Mac OS Linux, you'll be using Q ground control because mission planner is only available for Windows. Then it will also tell you the system assembly, how to mount the flight controller, EAC motors, installing the GPS compass, loading the firmware configuration. This is where like you will start like checking the motors, checking the sensor, setting up the sensors, etc. 
and then if there's also a section for if you any problem comes what you should do if you are building in your case then you can like post it on the group and we will try to help so this is one of the uh, softwares then there is another one called as beta flight so this one is betaflight.com this software is mainly used for uh, hobby grade stuff like if you are just flying fpv this is the more preferred one because it is not as complex as the ardu pilot this will not allow you to do autonomous flights it doesn't support a gps like as good as ardu pilot ardu pilot will give you a very good gps connect this gps capability while beta flight is preferred for manual flights or just like small drones you use beta flight if it's a big drone if it's something that is commercially going to be used then you go for ardu pilot this is where you will find a beta flight setup so beta flight also have their uh, pc app so just like i said ardu pilot gives you mission planner so beta flight has its own beta flight configurator so you will be able to download that here like on drones like this one you use beta flight on bigger drones like the spraying drone and all or autonomous flying drones if you want to explore that topic you go with ardu pilot i'll show you a short like tutorial on how the mission planner looks uh, if there are no questions i'll start with that directly if there are any questions about this ardu pilot beta flight then please ask okay so i'll start the beta flight and quickly show you what it looks like not beta flight mission planner i'll start can you see it see the screen mission planner so this is the mission planner screen so in the previous fpv section when i was talking about the on screen display so this is something like similar to a on screen display when you are flying a fpv drone you will be able to see this there like you will get like the battery voltage you will get some horizon data like this line you will get on the camera feed uh, but this here is the mission planner so this you with this you can actually control the drone so here you can see that there are various option like auto there is rtl means return to home you can arm disarm arm disarm means starting or stopping the drone you can start a mission you can resume a mission you can give the speed of the drone you can change the altitude and you can set the flight mode here you can see the flight modes that we learned altitude hold acro stabilize auto and there are quite a lot of more so if you are interested in exploring these you will find it on the ardu pilot website that i showed you so with this screen you will be able to control the drone but to do that you need a telemetry module connected to your laptop and also a receiving telemetry module on the drone then there's a different screen here where you can actually plan a flight so for example let's just take this area if i want to plan a mission here so what i do is i draw a polygon so here i'm just randomly drawing it or otherwise there goes some planning before you actually draw it so once you select a particular area just right click and you can go to 
something called as uh, auto waypoints auto wp wp means waypoints you select simple grid here you will have like various options on what the how the drone should behave like what is the height that it should go here i'm keeping it as five then there is line spacing like what is the difference uh, distance between two lines that the drone when the drone travels so here i don't want a distance of 50 so for spraying we usually keep a five meter distance because the drone sprays that much and this is inline spacing this this basically means like sorry not that point the second one inline spacing so it is the distance like a checkpoint it adds at after that much distance so as you can see on the straight line there's a checkpoint here this is actually not required in this case so i'll be just increasing that distance until the checkpoint goes out okay so here we can also set the speed at which the drone should do and also like from which point the drone should start the mission like bottom left bottom left bottom right top right or top left here i'll be selecting top left so the mission the drone will start from here that is first it will go here then it will start doing the mission and down here you'll see some like data it shows that the area that i have selected is 4700 meter square that is almost slightly larger than one acre and the, how much the drone will travel so while going back and forth in this area the drone will almost be going like 900 meters distance between lines that we just set as five meters and the number of strips that is number of lines here are nine so i just click accept and now it has created a mission and because i had selected the top left first the drone will move to the top left point first this point here is the home position so in this case this is just a dummy home position in reality it will be the point where the drone will take off so let's say the drone will take off from here it will first move here okay so first the drone will travel to this point then it will start moving at three meters per second holding a height of five meters because i set the height as five meters and speed as three meter per second and it will start moving here once it reaches here it will turn come back and similarly it will repeat that zigzag motion and this is how in simple words a spraying drone works you create a mission select a particular area create a simple grid pattern and start the drone it will just move like go uh, perform the zigzag pattern and this is only possible because of the presence of barometer gps and compass that the flight controller is able to follow these patterns and once it reaches the last point that is here and you can see this dotted line so this is the returning path so once the drone reaches the last point you can call it back and this is the path that it will follow so this dotted line is the returning path so drone will follow this path and land back again here and if you are planning a mission you can actually design a mission beforehand like before going to the area if you know where the area is just open the map here plan the mission and you can actually save the file as you can see there is an option to save it you save the file in your on your laptop pc or a pen drive you can't save many missions on the flight controller you can only save one at a time so once one single mission is over you just have to load the next mission so there's a load button here so load the button and click right so right will override the old mission file and put the new one in its place then you just have to switch the drone to auto mode and it will execute the mission for performing the first setup you have to move to the setup section and these uh, videos are actually available on our channel on how to do the setup and how to like assemble the drone if you want to see how it actually happens 
it is actually it these videos are available on our youtube channel mm. these this was like the last section of the session today and i think you guys already have the drone building checklist so i won't be have i won't have to send you again if it is required then i'll send it so are there any questions about the mission planner drone softwares setting up the drone etc please ask by the time i'll send you the link to the channel I send the link in the chat. So this is where you can find the drone building video and also other information videos like the motor and all, etc. We have uploaded the videos here. So are there any questions about drone or any questions about the whole sessions that we have held till now? You can ask because this is the last part and we'll end a bit early today. Okay, Kion send the file. So this is the same file that I had shared last time. So here you will find all the you know, different parts of the drone and also the different tools that are required to build a drone. If possible, please share that PDF on the group as well again, because new people have joined, I think. So they will also get the list. Okay, so if there are no questions, then we will end the session for today. And any future updates will be putting on the group. And if you guys will be building a drone or you need help in building a drone, or even if you want the drone to be built, you can ask on the group and we will do it. Okay, any questions then? Kinit, Kion, only three people are left here, I think. No, I won't be able to show you a flip here inside the room. Maybe if we we are here, uh, we are in like how do you say it? If we manage to keep a class for drone flying, then that time we'll be able to show you all the tricks that you can draw do with a drone. Okay, so if there is uh, no more questions, then we will end the meeting.
and you guys can leave the meeting now okay then bye then if there will be any more sessions then there will the will be communicated through gsic okay then the future communications will be held on the group if there is any help that you need then please put it on the group okay then bye